Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Budget Planning Channel. I'm excited to be here today. I'm back in my prayerful planner. Um, I'm kind of in this rhythm of my prayerful planner just doing a film or a video on this once a week. And um, it's working out really well because I am working on things in my Etsy store, which is um, pretty exciting. I have September budget kits coming out. Um, and I will be posting a video either later today or tomorrow, um, after I post this video. And then I have, uh, three months of October, November, and December of my planner coming out. And so a lot of things happening, a lot of things going on, and I'm very, very busy, <laughs> but I still want to keep up with my prayerful planner and do some videos, even though I am very busy. <laughs> so here we go. Um, jumping right in. I have it here on Saturday, August 15th, because that's kind of where I left off last week. And um, I filmed and posted this. And I wanted to talk a little bit about, about what I have noticed in uh, this week's scripture writing and journaling prompts. And a lot of what we, what has been talked about is this theme of God's perfect peace. So the scripture on John 16, 33 on August 15th was perfect peace. Um, his here on Psalms uh, 29 11 says his people with peace. And here it doesn't say peace. But when I was thinking of the verse, the ability to learn and teachable heart. Um, this is the amplified version. And, and in this version, that's what it's talking about. Give me understanding and may I uh, know your testimonies. When you have God's understanding, you get that gift of perfect peace. And I love that. Hear it again. It says constant peace uh, in Isaiah 26, 3. And then Wednesdays was John 14, 27. Perfect peace again here. Uh, my peace um, over here, that peace of God on yesterday's. And then I will get into today's. Here in a few minutes. I just wanted to kind of do a flip through and review. And then at the end of this video, um, if you like stickers, I will be going through and adding stickers to my pages from the Happy Planner Happy Year book I got last year. I don't use this one often enough, but this is the spring section. It has these pretty flowers. So for me, I just love the floral, florals. And so I'm just going to use these two pages to fill stickers in here and I might draw from one of the others. So without further ado, let's get into this. So I have checked off every day that I've done this. I'm very good with the belt of truth. I do that pretty, pretty regularly. Um, I shoes a piece. Um, I do that more regularly. I was doing it every day up until the 8th. That's when I was doing a prayerful planner every day. And then I waited a week and now I'm doing it again here on the 21st. So I waited another week. Um, this check mark is actually for Healthy Me, Healthy Us by Les Perot. It's another video series I'm doing um, in that Bible study. And then the Shield of Faith, I do, which is part of the prayerful planner for me here where I write it over here. And Helm of Salvation, usually that's on Sundays or when I watch a sermon or something like that. And then Sword of the Spirit is where I write the scripture and I pray the scripture back to the Lord and ask for wisdom or whatever comes to mind while I'm praying and writing out my prayer over here. So I really like that. That's kind of where my Armor of God challenge is right now. And I hope and encourage you that if you've kind of got a, out of rhythm with doing this, that just jump back in wherever you're at, because that's what God does. He meets us right where we're at. And don't worry about the blank pages. Just start where you are today. So what I loved about this scripture here, it... I'll go ahead and read it real quick. It says, and this is Jesus speaking. Anything in red is Jesus. So I have told you these things so that in me, you may have perfect peace. In the world, you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident and be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. 
How powerful is that statement? That is just amazing. His perfect peace. He's already conquered the world. So really, whatever trials and tribulations we're going through now, everything else has been taken care of. We can have peace and rest, even though the craziness of COVID-19 or um, financial problems or all of that, God has already conquered the world and he's got us. He didn't have to focus on how do I conquer the world. He's taking care of that. He can just focus on us individually. And I love that verse. Um, and when I reflected back, there was a point in my life where once I was growing in my faith and I was committed to Bible studies and I was committed to <clears throat> the Lord and what I was doing, I realized even though all my circumstances, the things that caused me the most pain, the key things, the people that caused me the most pain, uh, my perception of the world, how my life was hurting so bad that one day I realized with my walk of the, in the Lord, I had peace. Though those circumstances never changed. And I was in this t point in my life, I was in a very dark place. My heart was a heart of stone. I was very angry and nothing could, in this world, could take me from that dark place to a place of joy and peace until I started surrendering myself to the Lord and giving him my problems and allowing him to teach me and show me who he is and that he can provide the peace that I was looking for, even though my circumstances never changed. So keep that in mind. If you're in a very dark or troubling time in your life, turn to him. It's hard to do sometimes. I get it. I struggled. 15 years I struggled. Wanting it to do my way. Wanting under my own will and my own power. And when I gave up that, man, changed my world. And I had peace and joy during circumstances that in the past always caused me pain. So there was that. <laughs> Here in the on Sunday the 16th, um, the scripture, Psalms 29, 11, the Lord will give unyielding and impenetrable strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Satan can't take the peace away. Satan can't get through that peace and destroy you. Remember, Christ has already conquered the world. Satan can't do anything. He can't, he has no real power. He has influence. And that wreaks havoc, but he's not God and he can't do what God does. And that's give us peace. So it's impenetrable. Um, that means nobody can penetrate it. Not Satan, not our own fallible sins that we allow trouble and havoc to wreak in our lives. So I absolutely love this verse and I love being reminded that if I find myself without peace, I need to check and see, am I allowing this to happen because I'm not relying on the Lord? Or am I allowing this into my life because I'm not praying and remembering that it's already been conquered, Satan can't penetrate, and I am just not listening to the Lord. So I love that reminder there. It, when I reflected back on it, um, I could see over my life, especially the past four and a half years that I've been going to church, um, the small steps, those little baby steps of continually leaning into the Lord and seeking faith and seeking out my faith with God and walking out my life with God, how he's led me to where I am today. To the God provided the church I'm going to. He, over a, a several month period, had three people tell me, oh, there's a great church. Go to CCC. You'll love it. And the third person actually was like, hey, who was my neighbor? And I love her. And she's awesome. Um, was a Bible study she wanted to do. And she goes, will you go with me to the Bible study at that church? And I'm like, sure, let's go. And I haven't left the church since. I haven't left that specific church. And I can see how God said <laughs> I know you were not in a good place. You were in a dark place and I can provide a church for you. 
And that's exactly what I asked him. I said, I, I'm not in a good place to go church shopping. I need you to provide the church. And he did exactly that, that specific prayer. But he did it very slowly. He prepared my heart. He prepared my mind. He introduced it to me in three different occasions over several months. And it wasn't until I was willing to step out and go, yeah, let's, let me try this. And it wasn't even trying to go to church. It was try, trying out a Bible study at the church. And I'm like, okay. And even after I started going to church there, it didn't dawn on me until years later, <laughs> a couple years later that, oh my gosh, God provided my church. He answered my prayer. My specific God, you find the church for me. He did it. It was awesome. I, I love that story. It's one of my favorite ones to tell. Um, here, uh, Psalms 119, 165. I am your servant. Give me understanding and the ability to learn and a teachable heart that I may know your testimonies. And I thought that was beautiful because you can have a lot of peace in your heart when you know Christ's testimonies, that he conquered the world, that he's here to save us and redeem us, that he is, that he loves us and love that is so pure that we don't get to see that every day. So, um, and I asked the Lord, teach me, keep teaching me, keep opening my heart up. Um, the first teachable moment I had with the Lord when we went back to the church was him teaching me to listen and obey him. And we did that through tithing. I had my own mindset. And when we went back to church, I wanted to tithe. I knew how much. And because I'm the budgeter in our family, I'm the one that handles all the money. My husband has no interest. <laughs> and um, I have to explain everything as far as where our money goes and how much he gets paid and all that stuff. <laughs> You think you pay attention, but he's one of those free spirits that he's just like, how much can I spend? And that's what I want to do. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I take care of a lot of that. And God was like, no, you cannot choose and you can't decide on your own about the tithing. I need your husband to do that. We tell him to go into prayer. He prayed to God. And when he came back, he gave me a number that was much lower than I expected. And... um I was like, okay, God, this is what you gave him in prayer. I'm going to obey it. I didn't question it. I didn't go, well, this is what I thought we should do. I just went, you know what? I'm going to obey it. And I did. And I obeyed it all year. That first year we were at church. And next thing I know, so many things happen after that. Blessings on blessings, not just financial. We gained peace. And this is where peace comes in in this for me. A teachable heart. I was allowed God to teach me something. And I was obeying what he was teaching me. And I had peace in my heart because my husband was transitioning out of the Navy. And he had no job prospects yet. He was just going to job fair after job fair that last month or so before um, he got out. And we didn't know where our income was coming after mid-December. We didn't know if he was going to have enough and we were going to be able to pay our bills. But neither one of us was in a state of mind of panic. I mean, a little concerned, but not overwhelming panic, got to get some kind of job, any job, and then, you know, or discouragement when he would apply for something and it wouldn't work out. So the amazing thing was the perfect job came along that was perfect for his skills and he makes pretty good money. And I'm like, wow, that was awesome. God was so good. We obeyed, we listened, and he gave us perfect peace through that whole time. I mean, who wouldn't want that? So here we go. <laughs> uh, that was uh, Monday on the 17th. This is Tuesday, Isaiah 26, 3. Um, you will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you, Lord, uh, in both inclination and character. Because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confidence, confident expectation. That's just there another reminder that if we continually rely on the Lord, if we continually obey the Lord, if we continually just lean into him every second of every moment of every day, with everything that we do, we have the Lord in mind he will give us peace about all our decisions, all our, and what we need to know at the time, and 
everything like that. I mean, it's just, he's so amazing and he's so beautiful. Um, my shield of faith for this, um, talked more about my pride <laughs> and how I wanted my way and my will, um, above the Lord's will. And he would always bring me back. His grace and mercy over me has been vast and great and amazing. And everything I do, I do through the perspective, is this my pride? Is this my will or is this God's will? Is this God's love? So I, I have those questions pop up when things happen and not just when things happen, but everything that I do, I'm, I'm really hyper-focused on trying not to allow my pride and my will interfere with God's will and seeing and discerning the difference between the two. So, and that's been not a struggle. It was a struggle in the beginning when I didn't know it or didn't see it. But over time, with my teachable heart that I've opened up and allowed, and I still have tons more to learn, um, but I see his grace and mercy over me. And when my pride kicks up, he kind of nudges me and goes, hey, <laughs> I'm over here. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got to refocus. Um, but he was kind and gentle and would bring me back with love and compassion on his will. And, and I thanked him for that. And I absolutely love that. Um, and that's what that verse brought to mind when I read that. So Wednesday, I, oh, this one's really, really good. And this is what got my wheels turning that every verse that I've been reading and talks about peace and how you can have peace with the Lord. And it says here in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. <laughs> That's just, that sums up everything. Peace is important. And God's peace is the most important. Don't try to appease your heart or your spirit with worldly things that perish and fail because they will never, ever work. I tried it for years and never did it work. But as soon as I obeyed God and as soon as God saw that my heart was aligned to him, he slowly and gently and kindly loved me back. And it was just so beautiful. I'm trying to look over what I've read over here. And this, again, reminding me when my husband retired from the Navy that I just described before and the job prospects. This, this brings me back to those days where I, it's my first testimony of God giving me peace over a circumstance that I felt normally would have been chaotic and out of control. And yet I still have peace. So Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. This is a belt of truth as well. The peace is ours. It is a gift. It's given freely. And we can all have that peace, but it doesn't come easily sometimes for us because of our worldly thoughts and our worldly ways and our relationship with Christ. It's, it comes all together as we walk out our life with Christ. It comes together when he takes us to one stage to another. And then one day we realize, we're not as dark as we once were. And then all of a sudden you're feeling peace so strong and so tangible. And you're going and you remember that moment for the rest of your life once you have had it. And then you look back and you realize, oh, he was giving me peace all along. But here's the moment I recognize it and I recognize it as God's peace. It's just the most amazing miracle <laughs> that you can have. So, um. Uh, yeah, and, and 
I recognize it every time, even since that moment, um, recent things. And I didn't write specifically, but there was a situation I was not in control of and my husband made a decision and I was not happy. <laughs> But there was a peace over me because it would have been something in the past that I would have absolutely just yelled on the top of my lungs about and and flipped out over with him. And I didn't. I was so calm and we both recognized it. And his willingness to be honest with me about that situation immediately after was just so amazing. And... It was just God, kind of like a God wink going, hey, you guys are doing it. Yeah, he did something and it was kind of dumb. And yeah, you normally would have flipped your lid over it, but he wasn't afraid to call. And that just showed maturity and growth on his part. And it showed maturity and growth on my part that I was willing to trust God in whatever was happening <laughs> that I wasn't liking very much. And I absolutely love that, um, that he did that. So... Let's get back into Friday today, and we are going to start putting in today's framework for the, today's prayerful planner. So let me get today's checkoff sheet. Um, we're going to be writing on Hebrews 11.1. 1. I recognize this, but I can't think of what it says off the top of my head. But I know it's a popular verse, and I'm going to have to pull that up. And then my faith is in you is the journaling prompt. And then, um, so I'm going to check that off since I wrote that. So here we go. Not sure why I'm writing in red today. <laughs> I normally reserve that for when Jesus is speaking, but I'm going to do the whole page. So I'll recognize that's not what this is. And because he wasn't speaking in Hebrews, that's for sure. Um, this was after he ascended. So the belt of truth is up here. Let's read that. For man's ways are in full view of the Lord and he examines all his paths. Proverbs 5, 21. Okay, so I've read that. That's my belt of, roof, belt of truth. Uh, for a man's ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all his paths. I'm curious, because I'm so used to the Amplified Version. I wonder if there's more to clarify that. So let's see what the Amplified Version says of that. Get my trusty iPad here and my Bible app. Get that going. Let's see. Proverbs, and then 5.21. So here it says, For the ways of man are directly before the eyes of the Lord, and he carefully watches all of his paths, all of his coming comings and goings. Oh, that's so reassuring. I love that. And that he's always watching, that he's always seeing my paths before I even get to my paths and all of that. That's, I love that. So, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in a few things here. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to start with just writing scripture. I know I try to do my priorities and gratitude all first, but I'm going to do all of this first and then I'll put that in later. So, um... So I'm going to go ahead and check off this. Shield of Faith will go over here, and then Sword of the Spirit will go on this side. And that way, I don't forget that. So let me find Hebrews 11. I love the book of Hebrews. It was the f Actually, this is interesting. Hebrews, it was the first Bible study, and it was the Bible study I was going to when my neighbor had asked me all that, oh, that, was all that time ago. Um, when I first started going to my church, um, and I actually came in on the last four lessons of Hebrews, um, it was a Jen Wilkin podcast study, um, that they did. And she actually came out with a new one 
that you can get at Lifeway, and I highly recommend it. I truly enjoy it. Uh, Jen Wilkin does uh, inductive studies, and I learn to read the Bible, and I learn to study the Bible with um, her style of study, and it's helped me tremendously. So if you're looking for someone, uh, my two favorite, no, three favorite Bible study persons is um, Jen Wilkins, um, Lisa Harper, and Priscilla Shire. I love all three of those women. They're amazing. I love their studies. Um, Jackie Hill Perry is another one that I really love. Uh, I have one that I haven't finished yet, but I'm going to get into that. So yeah, those are the studies I love. You can find all of them at lifeway.com if you're looking for a study. And I think they're doing individually. I know Jen Wilkin put out, and I don't know if the sale's still going on. And this is for August of 2020. But if you put go to Lifeway and put their name on a coupon code, I think it's like Jen Wilkin 50 and get half off for the Bible study and their um, books or the um, things like that. And I know Lisa Harper did the same thing. So take a look online and see if that's something you would be interested in. Let's see for now. Okay. Triumphs in faith, of faith. It says here, sorry, it's crooked. Uh, now faith is the assurance title, deed, confirmation. So what they're saying here, title, deed, confirmation, from what I learned, they were using legalistic language to, you know, express or heighten. Um, now the faith is assurance. Um, it's something you can trust, like a title or a deed to a property. You, it's yours. You can hold it. You can claim it. Same thing, confirmation. Of the things hoped or divinely guaranteed and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Yeah, so this is a very popular verse. This is, this is for the things that we cannot see that God guarantees. This is the things in the spiritual realm that we have no knowledge of but God sees fully. So we can trust God in that because it's divinely guaranteed. Um, things of hope are for divine guaranteed and the evidence of things not seen. There's a lot of things that are small miracles in our life that we can't see. A lot of times we'll call them coincidences or um, just random things. And they're not, they are laid out by God usually and they are very, he's very meticulous and detailed. He's the most organized man or organized. Our God is very organized. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and we are so finite in our mind and our thoughts that we do not realize how he does everything so microscopically to the expanse of the world. And it's organized and it's in his plan. And it's, we can't stop anything that he's doing. He's already conquered the world through Jesus. He's already defeated Satan. We are just going through what's left of what he's already completed. And um, we can be assured in our faith so strongly as if it was a title or a deed. And it's confirmed. There's no changing it. <laughs> so I love this verse. This is awesome. So and um, And we can just stand on it as a fact. Even though we can't see it, can't touch it, it's all faith-based, it's true, and it's reality. And that's how we have to look at it. So I like this. So I'm going to take the time. I'm going to write in these three areas, and I will be right back with what I wrote down. Okay, I am back. Straighten up a little bit here. So yeah, I love this. It's th the amazing thing that has really come out of the um, challenge that we're doing with the armor of God and the prayerful planner is got everything upside down. Sorry, is how the shield of faith is forcing me to remember regularly 
um, God's faithfulness. And the more I look back and remember God's faithfulness, the more I swell up with excitement and assurance that this title deed, this confirmation from the Lord, that my faith is a, is the assurance of things hoped for and that it's divinely guaranteed and the evidence of things not seen. I, the more I look back, the more I see clearer daily when these things occur, when he's doing these things in my life, I can recognize them easier. I can feel them and feel closer to him, even though he's always right next to me 24 <laughs> seven. Um, there's this concept of feeling closer to the Lord. Um, I can feel him and stuff like that. I think it's just us being filled with, filled with, you know, his love, his peace, his mercy, his kindness, and us feeling it is just us recognizing it. Um, sometimes we don't feel it because we're in a darker place and I get that, but I think when we do feel it, it's because not because we're connected to him more as Christians, um, we're always connected to him, but I think we feel it more because we're recognizing it more. We're, we're opening our hearts and minds and those teachable moments to recognize that tangibleness that's right there always. We just don't always feel it. So and that's kind of what I got out of this. Uh, my prayer was, my faith in you, Lord, is in your hands. I trust you completely to direct me in your will in my life. And I thank you, Lord, for your perfect peace and love. I mean, that's what, what I was praying back to the Lord. I'm just so happy he is doing that in my life. So so that's all I have for today as far as the prayerful planner and what I've learned and what I'm reading and how excited I am because you know I get excited sometimes. So I'm so glad I did this. I actually had no intention of doing this this morning, but um, once I started getting into this again, I'm like, no, I need to do a video. So thank you, Lord, for allowing me to do the video. And um, I'm just going to go back. I'm going to lay some stickers down and... Um, so if you're done watching, <laughs> you don't have to watch me lay stickers, but if you enjoy that part, I'm going to do that and I will be right back. Um, if you are done now, then um, if you like my channel, please uh, subscribe to my channel and please give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. And let's get into the sticker part. done there we go <laughs> finally got all the stickers down it was fun to lay all the stickers down and um, I love these these are so pretty florals out of this um, flowers uh, happy planner book and then the rest of these came out of the uh, happy year from last year about this um, last fall actually so that's an older book but they probably still have some in some of the stores and I just put random stickers down there. I thought they were really pretty and looked really good. So um, I hope you enjoyed this part. Um, my stickers, have I, I'm not decorating nearly as much. Um, I have just so much written down. I really don't have a lot of room. And I think that's just the path God's got me on right now. And um, I'm going to fill in all this stuff later. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, like I said before, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And um, if you have any questions or comments, I would love to chat with you in the comment section below. And if you need prayer, um, please go ahead and um, email me. I would love to pray for you if you have a need. And um, so anyway, I hope you have an amazing and blessed day. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.